Okay, so with TurboSmooth, there's a couple things we need to understand real quick. First is, how does it subdivide its surface? And then second, how does it do the actual smoothing? So if we look at this plane, we take this into account real quick, um, it actually has four polygons. I know it's showing eight, but it actually has four. We can kind of count with our eyes, right? So anytime that this number increases or decreases, we're going to divide it by two, and that is going to be the actual count of the polygons. So Starting with four polygons, we've got TurboSmooth applied. If we add a single iteration, we're now up to 16. Remember, divide by two. So every time we add an iteration of TurboSmooth, just in short, it multiplies the polygon count by four. Okay, so uh, one iteration would have 16, next iteration would have 64, so on and so forth. Uh, now as we watch this subdivide, if we pay particular attention to the polygon that is in this corner right here closest to us, um, we'll notice that it subdivides into four polygons. If we watch this one down here in the corner, we'll notice that it divides into four again. And again, watching that corner, it subdivides into another four. So that is how the subdivision works. And knowing this, we can actually get into a lot of trouble with our models just by adding a lot of Turbo Smooth. Uh, we started with four polygons. If we go to the maximum number of iterations, which is 10, we now end up with, let my computer think about it for a second, uh, over 4 million polygons. So it's it can be a fairly dangerous tool. We have to use it uh, with very much respect uh, for our machines. Um, I'm running a very powerful workstation. It still took my computer probably about three or four seconds to calculate how how four million polygons looks like on top of this plane. So we need to be very careful just clicking the uh, the iterations up however we like. So that being said, we're going to set a couple ground rules here. While we're modeling, it's very important to know what the end result's going to look like, and we get a best the best idea of knowing how that's going to look by working with a single iteration of TurboSmooth. After a single iteration of TurboSmooth, um, it is more or less just making it more and more pretty. So the rule here is this. We model with one iteration, and then once we're done and it looks really good with one iteration, then we will increase that iteration count to two just to make it shine, just to make it look even better. Uh, rarely will we go up to three or above unless there's a specific reason why we would need that dense of a, of a mesh. Uh, a lot of times that has to do with, uh, you know, p uh, pillows, cushions, curtains, cloth, something that's deforming or needs to deform a lot and look really smooth while it does it. Uh, so in order to keep your models at a manageable state uh, and not overdo it, we're going to say that our max is at two, three for special instances. Uh, that is also because uh, a lot of beginners try to hide deformities or deficiencies in their modeling by using a lot of turbo smooth. If we're looking to do this for a professional application, that's not the mentality we want to be modeling with. We want to first get our modeling correct and then apply modifiers to increase the quality of it. We don't want it to hide the 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 non-quality models. Um, so a lot of times if, if someone's using a very dense mesh something like this it may be a little telling not necessarily that they're a bad modeler but uh, you really kinda have to ask given the application of the model and the scene why are we using that much geometry that is costing us you know seconds or minutes on render time um, which can add up so just keep that in mind. All right, so let's uh, bring that back down to zero, and let's come over here to this guy. So we just talked about how it subdivides. Now let's talk about how it does the actual smoothing. Um, Turbo Smooth really needs one thing. It needs three edges to operate on. So that's what we've got here. We go to the front view. 
we have three edges. We have one, two, and three that are running the, across the length of this object. So let's add Turbo Smooth real quick and we'll see how this works. If we look at this and we look at the end results, go down to Editable Poly, and we toggle the show end result, you'll notice that we started with two and we end with eight. So uh, two times four is eight, so that math works out. Uh, but also it's kind of averaged this curve between these three points or these three edges. So let's go back to our front view and kind of dissect this a little bit. If we go into a sub-element mode, whenever we're modeling and we've got Turbo Smooth applied and we're showing end result, uh, we're going to end up with something that looks like this. And if we go into perspective, we'll see a li little bit more of it. Um, the orange outline is what we refer to as the cage. This is our original geometry. It's the geometry that we're actually operating on. The mesh that you see in the viewport all these green polygons, that is the end result. That is all the modifiers that are on top of the stack being pressed together and this is what the outcome is going to look like. So right now we're just seeing the turbo smooth getting applied. So if we go to our front view, we've got one edge here, one edge, and one edge that's running the length of this model. And what turbo smooth is doing is it's actually averaging the curve throughout all three points. Okay, so the white line is our end result, orange line is the cage. Now if we start to add edges, so let's add one about right here, go back to the front. Now what TurboSmooth is doing is it's taking these three edges into account. It's saying there's no deviation, these are straight lines, so there's no curve to be added. And then it is taking these three edges into account, saying yes, there is something we can smooth so let's create based on the distance from one vertex to another what that curve is going to look like and so we come up with this uh, semi shortened curve more or less at, at this end of the object uh, if we were to start to move this edge up and down we're now either tightening that curve up the closer these edges are together or we're relaxing it as we move them farther apart. Similarly if we were to add an edge over here on this side we now add even more calculation for TurboSmooth to crunch through. Uh, it is now averaging these three again straight line no curve. It is then going over these three there are not straight lines so we need a curve to be calculated and then over here there are these three that it's gonna do its operations on and give us what we now have as our end result here and obviously as we add more iterations to turbo smooth uh, these curves are just going to get more and more refined as there's more polygons to work into that smoothing calculation. Okay, so that's how TurboSmooth does its subdividing, and that is how it does its basic smoothing calculation. It, it takes um, three edges into account and smooths over those, moves on to the next three, and it's doing this in all three axes all around your object all at once it's constantly looking and updating um, and then the subdividing is uh, just taking each polygon and multiplying it by four subdividing it into four uh, separate polygons of its own so uh, next up we're going to look at some actual implementation of TurboSmooth on an object and exactly why we would want to use TurboSmooth uh, most of the time on our objects and why it's important to control those edges and how they appear.